boos and ghouls out there in YouTube land. This is Jen, and today I'm going to be coming you, to you with a tag video. And today's tag video is brought to us by a really very nice guy. He has a channel. I'll leave his link at the bottom in the description below. Um, the Last Shoe Gagazers tag. Um, now, I just recently discovered his channel a little while ago, but I really dig his videos. He does a lot of horror movie reviews. And this is actually his first tag video. He came up with it himself. And it is. Uh, it doesn't have anything to do with horror, really. This is a nostalgia tag uh, video. And, he, and it, when I was watching his video, I thought to myself, um, it got me thinking about my own uh, uh, childhood and things, movies and TV shows that kind of shaped me who I am today. It, it's funny, you don't really think about it unless you sit down and actually think about it. You know, uh, what we watch and what we see when we're kids and teens kind of do some have an impact on who, what we become and it influences a lot of a thing. It kind of shows our taste and and what kind of people we're going to turn out to be. Film is a very powerful medium and you know what you watch when you're little shapes what you become when you get older. And so and everyone has nostalgia, so this is a very universal topic. And um, he was a 90s kid like myself and it just really got me thinking about it and he he said that the tag was open to anyone who wanted to do it. And so I thought, I, well, I, since he said anyone could do it, um, he didn't ban me, surprisingly, <laughs> um, uh, that, that I would do this, the nostalgia tag as well. So without further ado, if you want to hear um, my trip down, if you want to walk with me down my memory lane, uh, stick around and we'll do the, the last shoe gazers nostalgia tag together. And basically how I am going to do this, first I'm going to talk about the television shows that kind of shaped my life, and then um, the second part of this I'll talk about the movies. And I'm not going to talk too much about the horror movies, even though horror played a huge part in my childhood. You guys have heard a lot about the horror movie end of it, so I, I, I'm not going to touch too much on the horror, even though that had a big impact in my life. I'm going to go to other things that you guys might not be aware of. And like I said, I'm going to start with um, the television shows that I watched when I was young and, and, and a teenager. And probably, like I said, I'm an 80s and 90s kid. I was born in 1981. And, when, and for my generation, for, for people that grew up in my decades, um, probably what most 90s kids would say was like if they could only pick one television show to, uh, one, one television station to go to, it would probably be for most kids either Nickelodeon or Cartoon Network. And while I did watch my fair share of Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network was one, I kind of watched it, but I wasn't really a cart, I wasn't much of a Cartoon Network kid. It, I, if I was flipping channels and there was nothing on, I tuned to it, but Cartoon Network wasn't a big part of my particular 90s childhood experience, um, but, but Nickelodeon was. But actually for me personally, um, the network that I would say was uh, that I when I was when I was thinking about doing this tag the the network that I keep kept going to when I would remember and having all these memories was not Nickelodeon but it was actually the good old USA network um, I, this one I didn't realize until I started thinking about it how much that 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 uh, that network really impacted my love uh, love of movies um, uh, it's a completely it was when when I was growing up in the in the 80s and 90s and um, before the 2000s hit it was a completely different network now we kind of associate um, the USA Network as, you know, 24-hour SVU and CSI reruns. I mean, nine times out of ten, you click on that channel, that's what's going to be playing. Um, but back in the 80s and 90s, it was a completely different landscape. They had so much variety, and um, I, there are so many uh, TV sh uh, shows that I watched off USA and so many memories that I have of, of, my, of, of just me and stuff with my family. And um, when I was a little kid in the late 80s or well mid to mid to mid to uh, mid mid 80s to to late 90s, uh, uh, it just it just really impacted my life. So the first show that I'm going to talk about, and I, I don't know how many people are going to remember this, but Commander USA's Groovy Movies. Now this show, uh, at first it just started on Saturday afternoons, and then they moved it up to all weekend where you would see it on Saturday and Sunday. And uh, Captain USA's Groovy Movies was basically um, just a guy dressed up in a cheap super superhero's costume playing really bad movies. Um, like really schlocky 
bad movies and horror movies and that is where I, I think that is a big part of why I love horror movies this day. I mean, he and he played, when he was first starting out, it, as the show got older, it kind of evolved and they started playing more current movies, but when it was just getting started, they played like movies from the the 50s and 60s, even 30s and 40s, and, they, and they, this was all fresh. I was just a little kid at the time, and um, all these movies were just fresh, and, and I loved, and even if the movies weren't my cup of tea, I loved uh, Commander USA. He just made bad puns and was ex explaining the movie, and you just had a good time, and I remember remember my mother always had this on on the weekends. Um, I come from a real small family. I was an only child and my father was away for a lot of it. He uh, he was getting his master's degree. He has like a million different uh, 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 all kinds of degrees and doctorates and stuff and when I was growing up he wasn't here a lot of the time. He was away at school so it was basically just me and my mom and on the weekends she would always put, uh, turn it to USA and we would watch uh, Commanders at USA's groovy movies and it just a lot of fun and I, I, I hadn't thought about those memories in a long time, but uh, after watching the, uh, the nostalgia tag, I thought, oh my god, I did not realize how big of an impact it had in my life. Um, another thing on USA that um, growing up that also kind of did the same thing as Commander USA was USA's Up All Night with Gilbert Gottfried. And I was one of the few little kids, I'm talking about six, seven, eight years old, who actually knew who Gilbert Gottfried was. And I actually thought he was funny. Not many people, even adults uh, at the time, really particularly thought he was funny. They thought he was kind of annoying and not very funny, but I actually thought he was funny. And on Friday nights, he would do USA's Up All Night and pretty much do the same thing with Commander USA's groovy movies, except he kind of focused on like bikini, there was a lot of bikini things in the movie titles he was running, and um, he also did whenever Friday the 13th would come on, they would play all the Friday the 13th movies on the weekends, and it was just a lot of fun, and, and then later on down the road, um, they also switched it to Saturday nights where, uh, where Rhonda would be doing up all night, and she was just a character, and uh, just a big blonde uh, character that she played, and kind of a ditzy blonde, and she she was kind of like a blonde Elvira is basically how she did it. And I remember she would always do USA up all night. And she would play pretty much the same kind of bad movies that, uh, that Gilbert Gottfried played. And it, 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 it just was something that was always on on the weekends. Um, that The station rarely left USA on the weekends. And uh, so those were really uh, nostalgic for me as well. Also, the good old USA Network played the Cartoon Express. And that was something else that I really liked. I didn't watch a lot of the cartoons that they played, except I did watch Jim. They played the uh, they played the cartoon Jim, and I remember waking up really early in the mornings because my mother had to work. She was an RN, and I would have to get up with her. And I remember it still being dark in the mornings, and she would put on Cartoon uh, uh, Express for me and play Jim. And I honestly blame Jen is why so many girls from the 80s had so so such bad relationships because if you'll remember, Jim had this. Uh, 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 character or Rio that was her boyfriend, but he was in love with Jim. He didn't know that Jim was a, the it was a soap opera for little girls, basically. And um, but 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 it really now looking back on it now, I didn't think of it much as a kid. But I uh, looking back on it now, he was kind of a jerk because he had he was in love with his girlfriend, only her alter ego, and he didn't know that that was his girlfriend. So I remember. It, it, I think it really kind of skewed my idea on relationships, pretty young age. Um, but yeah, the good old Cartoon Express was another thing that I really liked. Uh, they had game shows, and then even as I got older and eventually the Captain USA's Groovy movie stopped. Um, they they also had uh, another thing on Saturday nights called Saturday Night Nightmares and this is something I is very nostalgic for me because I remember watching it with my mother. Now she's not a hardcore horrorite that I was but uh, the, the movies they played weren't really really that like like my extreme gore stuff. It was it, it was pretty mild. They would play like things like the Omen movies and things like that but my mom and I would, would sit up on Saturday nights and watch them together and I just remember that was kind of like a bonding time for us. We would sit and watch movies and it, it, it have a lot of nice memories from that. They also did reruns of the old Alfred Hitchcock Presents. Uh, they made it up in the 90s where it was, or, where, or 80s where it was colorized. They had the Hitchhiker playing also. It was a whole lineup and it was something my mom and I always looked forward to on the weekends. So that's very nostalgic for me. And then as I got older, USA was still there for me. When I was, when I was started to be, when I was a teenager, kind of in that middle uh, land where I was too young to get a license but 
too old for a lot of the kiddie stuff. Um, I watched USA a lot on Saturday nights because they revamped their lineup and they played things like Duckman. I absolutely loved that show when I was a kid. Jason L. Alexander uh, played a cartoon detective duck, voiced the cartoon detective duck, and it was really, really funny. And I, I was probably 13, 14, 15, and I remember sitting home on Saturday nights, and that's how I spent my Saturday nights was watching Duckman. They also ran a reboot of Weird Science. Uh, they made a TV show out of it. It wasn't great, but I remember if there was nothing else on, I'd watch it. And they also um, would uh, play Silk Stockings, and I, 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 I'd watch that. I like the detective shows, and I remember watching that. And it seemed, now it seems very tame, but I remember when I was a little kid thinking Silk Stockings was kind of racy. I think it was that opening intro that that they did but yeah so the the usa network was really really something that was very nostalgic and i have a lot of memories uh with my mother and um and i like i said i really think that that is one of the reasons why i love all these schlocky movies and have a lot of knowledge uh, i was really getting a lot of knowledge at a very young age that a lot of kids you know either weren't into or their parents wouldn't let them watch i was lucky enough to have a mother that was pretty cool and you know she knew she knew i could handle it and was okay with my love of horror and i i got quite a quite an extensive education thanks to good old commander usa groovy movies and uh and joe bob and uh, and uh, not joe bob i'm going to get to joe bob but uh gilbert Gottfried. uh speaking since i've already just stumbled over it i guess the next thing i should talk about another really nostalgic memory that i have with my mother is watching joe bob briggs first on the good old movie uh, channel network the drive-in is the last place in the world where you can do any disgusting thing that you want to do in the privacy of your own automobile like god intended you and know so um you know there was a consumer demand for this and i yeah. went after it <laughs> yeah this sleazy movie right, right, right. And she, the, Joe Bob Briggs was the only redneck. My mother, like I've talked, is a tree-hugging liberal. And, um, and she, and, 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 until I started dating, uh, Joe Bob was the only redneck she would allow into her house. And on Saturday nights when, uh, when they used to play on the movie channel, my mom and I would sit up and watch Joe Bob Briggs together. And again, I got a hell of an education thanks to Mr. Joe Bob Briggs. And I just fell in love with the guy. He had so much knowledge about movies. And I loved the way he talked because I knew people like that. And it just was a great experience. And, um, I, I, re and I have a lot of memories of my mom and I laughing and watching really, really bad movies like Frankenhooker and um, um, just, just stuff like that and getting so much knowledge in with it. And um, one of my favorite horror hosts, well, he's not just horror host, I guess horror and schlock is his bag. And I just absolutely love Mr. Joe Bob Briggs. And he's another big part of my childhood. And again, another reason probably why I, uh, I have such a love of horror and bad movies. And I, like I said, a lot of those memories, I, I remember watching a lot of that stuff with my mom. And, and again, that, that, those are nice memories to have. So there you go. And then, of course, I also watched a little bit of TBS because eventually uh, they moved him to TBS and he had Monster Vision. And my mom and I didn't really watch the Monster Vision together but I because uh, she was, it was a different time. But when I was a teenager and I wasn't, and if I happened to be home that night, I would watch the Monster Vision along with it uh, too. So... Very good memories. Um, and then, like I said, uh, I'm a 90s kid, so of course Nickelodeon has to play a little bit a part of my, um, of my nostalgic trip down uh, nostalgia lane. And um, I, the, the shows I'm going to talk about that were very nostalgic for me for Nickelodeon are probably ones that people might not mention as much. And one of the shows that I really loved on Nickelodeon when I was a little kid was the show Danger Mouse. I really credit that show with giving me my appreciation and love of British humor. Um, I, I just loved that show when I was a kid. I'm not a James Bond person at all, but I just loved, had a lot of British humor and it, I think you either like, British humor is something you either like or you don't. And I happen to really like and I credit that to Danger Mouse. Another um, Nickelodeon uh, show that I really loved um, was Ren and Stimpy. Um, the Nicktoons in general, I liked some of them, but the, none of them were really, I really loved. Rugrats and Doug, they were okay. Um, but but the show that I really loved as a kid, and probably won't surprise anybody, was good old Ren and Stimpy. Um, I just loved the gross out humor, the extreme humor. It all just really worked for me. And again, I knew some kids whose parents wouldn't let them watch Ren and Stimpy, but luckily I, was, I had a cool mom and she didn't mind me watching it. And I, I loved Ren and Stimpy. That was one of my favorite cartoons growing up as a kid. 
And then uh, the last show that I really liked on Nickelodeon that I know nobody else is going to remember is uh, the show 15. Um, I, I love, I have a very melodramatic side to me um, that you guys are going to find out in a minute. And um, I, 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 it was basically just a Canadian teen soap opera. And they were trying, Nickelodeon was trying to reach a little bit older kid demographic. And when I was probably 9, 10, 11 ish, I discovered 15 on Nickelodeon and they only played it on Sundays and I would tune in and the problems were pretty tame but I guess for the day they thought they were being pretty provocative they dealt with um, uh, uh, alcohol abuse divorce uh, things like that topics of the day and um, just in a very very soap opera the only way anyone might remember this show is that it did have a very young uh, Ryan Re Reynolds as playing a character in this movie and um, I think that's the only reason anyone might remember this show but it ran for a few years in the 90s and I, I was actually that was one of my favorite shows on Nickelodeon, was 15. And um, I also like Double Dare, but that's like a universal 90 kids thing. Everybody loves Family Double Dare. Um, I also watched a lot of Nick at Night when I was a kid. Um, my, I actually watched more Nick at Night than my parents did. Um, Nick at Night let me discover shows like The Alfred Hitchcock Presents, I Love Lucy, Dragnet, um, which always, my parents never understood why. They would be like, why are you watching, I was eight or nine at the time, and they were like, why are you watching Dragnet? I liked it. Um, it was a weird show for a little kid, but I actually really enjoyed Dragnet. And, um, uh, and uh, I also like Donna Reed, and that one really made my mother mad because I, I just think, oh, she looks so pretty doing housework, and my mother's like, that is not a realistic thing. And I go, but it's so neat. It used to infuriate, my mother's kind of a feminist, so that would really <laughs> infuriate her too. Um, but yeah, but Nick, uh, Nickelodeon and Nick at Night were definitely a big part of my childhood. And um, I think, th and then um, for the other TV shows that I did like enjoy as a kid, and I'll hurry up and then I'll get to the movies and then we can be done with this. Hopefully I'm not boring you guys too much. Um, but the, um, the other shows that I really like, the one show that I remember that was a sitcom that I absolutely loved as a kid, and I think really... Um, really developed some of my personality was the show Night Court. And really the reason why I love Night Court was for the character that John Laurel Kett played, Dan Fielding. I remember sitting there seeing an episode one time and, and when John Laurel Kett came on the, the screen and he was just so smarmy and he always had such a witty, sarcastic remark for everyone. He also had kind of a perverted sense of humor, which is something that, that even a little Jen, Jen I guess was always a pervert because little Jen always loved the dirty jokes. I mean, it never offended me, never bothered bothered me and I got the dirty jokes. I was kind of a Kenny. I was a female Kenny basically like from South Park. I, got, I was the kid that got the dirty jokes way early than I probably should have. Um, but but yeah, I, I loved um, I loved John Laurel Kett and I remember sitting there watching an episode thinking I want to be like him. I want to be able to just uh, just whip out really cute um, really cute comebacks and one-liners and sarcasm. I, I also really like the comedian Dennis Miller so you know smarmy assholes and then I'm attracted to smarmy assholes and according to my family those are the kind of guys I'm attracted to anyway so go figure <laughs> um, but yeah that was a show that I really enjoyed I also liked the Golden Girls I was a kid that liked the Golden Girls a lot and I also liked the show Dinosaurs that was another show from uh, the TGIF I was never much into that whole TGIF Friday thing but I did like enjoy watching the dinosaurs on TGIF and not the mama I think I drove my family crazy with not the mama not the mama and I think that pretty much covers all of my nostalgic uh, TV shows. And now I'm going to talk a little bit about like movies that were very nostalgic. And my movies might surprise you guys. Um, I, like I said, I'm not going to touch on the horror movies because you guys have heard me talk about horror movies, you know, pretty much forever. So I'm going to talk about some other movies that just for whatever reason were very nostalgic. And um, one of the movies that I guess I, I, I really... That really makes me think of my mother whenever I watch this movie now um, would be uh, My Cousin Benny. My mother loved that movie, and she, her favorite part is right here. Heads in his office. Heads? What kind of heads? I don't know. He's got a boar, a bear, a couple of deer. Whoa, you're going to shoot a deer? I don't know, I suppose. I mean, I'm a man's man. I could go deer hunting. A sweet, innocent, harmless, leaf-eating, doe-eyed little deer. Hey, Lisa, I'm not going to go out there just to wimp out, you know? 
Yeah, the fucking deer scene. Um, she she's a she's a vegan. At the time, she was just a vegetarian. Now she's gone all out and cut out dairy and cheese. And I, personally, I think if you have to cut out that shit, what 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 what's the point of life? But that's my mother. Um, but she's a very big animal rights uh, lover and activist and stuff. And she just adored that scene with the deer hunting scene. She she thought it was funny. And I remember just watching her. It was a funny scene to me too, but it was even more funny whenever I would watch it with my mother. She would just go into a hysterics and my mother is a very serious she has a sense of humor but she's a very serious methodical person and it's kind of funny when when she does get tickled at something or when she does say something funny because it's very unexpected when it comes from my mother so and that's a movie that whenever that scene comes she'll just go into hysterics she loves that scene so my cousin Vinny is a very nostalgic movie and it really makes me think of my mom um, another, uh, I guess since I'm in the comedy section anyway, I guess I'll talk about a few other comedy movies that I really loved as a kid. Um, my favorite, uh, this is probably one of my favorite Tim Curry movies. I, I love Rocky Horror Picture Show, but probably if someone were to put a gun to my head and say, what's your favorite Tim Curry movie of all time, it would be the movie Clue. I watched that all the time when I was a little kid. And uh, with comedy with me, I've noticed I really uh, like ensemble cast. A lot of movies that I really enjoy that are comedic usually have a a big ensemble, uh, ensemble cast. Now, of course, Tim Curry shines above everybody else in this movie, but he gets he get he he plays well with all the other characters in it, and it's just such a funny movie. And that that damn scene, one plus one plus one, you know, one plus two plus one. That scene, oh, I would sit there sometimes at night when I was going to sleep as a kid, trying to think because I'm horrible at math anyway. But I absolutely love um, love the uh, Clue, and I love that kind of dry, deadpan humor in it. And I liked a lot of the other characters. Leslie Ann Warren was in it um, as well as a few other other um, uh, I can't think of the actress's name but there are a lot of actors that I uh, that I watched and really liked. Madeline Kahn that's I was thinking uh, she was used in a lot of Mel Brooks movies uh, she's in this movie she's great in it I mean it's just uh, just such a fun romp it's crazy it's silly you wouldn't think a movie based on a board game would work but the magic of Tim Curry it made it work as long as everyone else in the supporting cast so I've always been a big Clue fan um, I'm a Tim Curry fan. I'm a big Clue fan. Um, another movie that I like that's also in the uh, comedic aspect, speaking of Mel Brooks, would definitely be A Young Frankenstein. I saw this when I was about five, six, seven, I'd say, six, seven-ish. I discovered the movie, and um, I really, really love the movie. I, I love, both my parents are, are, are Mel Brooks fans. My dad's probably a bigger Mel Brooks fan, but my mother loves Blazing Saddles, so they're both, they both really appreciate Mel Brooks, but I've always been into the young Frankenstein. Again, probably shows you that even, even at that young age, I always was drawn to some sort of horror aspect of it, and um, Gene Wilder gives a great performance, Terry Garr, um, Igor, I, I, Igor was what always cracked me up in the movies, like all the scenes that really get me cracked up are all with, or not Igor, it's pronounced Igor, um, it's just really funny, and I absolutely love the movie, and um, yeah, so that's definitely a nostalgic movie for me. Um, another one that I would say is, um, for, for my comedic movies, is one that I don't hear very many people talk about. It, it's what's made me, this movie made me a Steve Buscemi fan for life, and it's just a really wacky, out there movie. I found it at a video store once and I fell in love with it, and that is Ed and His Dead Mother. Probably half of you people watching this probably have never heard of it, and it's just a really weird movie, and it's not exactly like a movie that makes you laugh exactly. There's some parts that make you smile. I don't know what it is about this movie, but it always has worked for me. But I, it's it's a movie that's probably not for everybody. He just play. It's kind of a comedic updated 90s version of Psycho in a weird way. Kinda, sorta, but the mother's a zombie. It's a weird movie, but if you ever run across it, definitely check it out. It, it's, it might not be for everybody, but it, it's a fun movie. Um, yeah, another uh, comedic movie that I really like is uh, Death Becomes Her, and the reason I love this movie and why it always works for me is uh, the performance given by Bruce Willis. He plays such he uh, he plays such against his usual stereotypical role. You know, he was a big action guy, big tough hero, and in this movie he plays such a mouse to these two very strong women, uh, Goldie Hawn and Meryl Streep. And um, I I love I love this scene where uh, you know uh, where she's talking about we can go to we have to 
go to the police and confess and she goes you know is talking about prison and and then he kind of turns around and goes I'll get the shovels dear I, I love that line I love the way he plays it and and uh, as good as uh, Goldie Hawn and Meryl Streep are in this movie really the one that makes me laugh and makes me really enjoy this movie is Bruce Willis and then the last comedic movie in on my list um, that's very nostalgic for me would be Oscar with uh, Syl Sylvester Stallone. And this is a movie that never gets talked about. It's, it's not even one of his like really bad hated movies. It's just a movie, uh, besides uh, my, my, my 17 year old son Christian, he loves the movie a lot too. He's a big uh, 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 Sylvester Stallone fan, but um, he's the only other person I know that enjoys this movie as much as me. And it's when uh, Sylvester Stallone tried to go and be, uh, uh, do comedy, and it's it, it's about gangsters. And in a minute, you're gonna see. I'm a big uh, I'm a big big uh, uh, mafia and gangster movie and TV show buff. I love movies that have anything to do with the mafia. And um, this movie is a comedic take on that. And Sylvester Stallone plays a uh, gangster trying to go straight. And again, it's a big ensemble cast. Chaz Palminteri is in it. And I, I love, this is, an, this is the movie that made me love Chaz Palminteri. And um, it's just really funny. And it, it, it's a simple story. We've seen it done before. But under these contexts with the gangster, uh, with the 1930s gangster premise added into it, it's just really, really fun. And it, it also has uh, Melissa Tomei in it, and it's just a really great movie. And no one really talks about it when they're talking about Stallone, and I don't know why. But if you ever, if you guys ever get a chance to see, uh, and it's one of those movies. When I was a kid, my parents never got why I liked this movie. My mother or father, neither one of them are big action people, and um, my mother likes some of his art. Sylvester Stallone does paint art, and she likes his art, but she does not particularly care for any of his movies. And they never could understand why I loved Oscar so much. It was always one my parents would just kind of I never fit in like my parents I think they they thought they were going to get a completely different child than the one they got I surprised my parents a lot in a lot of ways over my thing I never fit in with them a lot of ways um but that really goes for my comedic nostalgic comedic movies now um like I said uh I guess the next thing I should talk about is my love of um of um gangster movies and um I I the the the, the movies that the gangster movies that I love are of course um, Goodfellas and that was a movie that I saw when I was a kid and I just absolutely loved it and I watched, watched it over and over and over and really who one of my favorite uh, storylines in the movie and who I really followed was Lorraine McBrocco's uh, character uh, Karen where, and I, I really liked her character and I love the scene where he's, he's been cheating on her he falls asleep in the bed and he wakes up with the gun pointed to her uh, love will make you crazy with the with the right uh, with the right man and, um, and I love the monologue she does where, you know, how could I leave him? I couldn't even kill him. And with the right man, I can understand that mindset. I would never put a gun to any guy's head, but I can totally understand why uh, she did that. And I, it's just a great movie, and um, I love it. So Goodfellas is one. Of course, another Martin Scorsese movie that I absolutely love, and this one a lot of people didn't love, was Casino. And uh, the, the performance with Joe Pesci is why I love that one. That, that actually, that movie, Casino, Casino is one that I real is probably one of the most hardest scenes to watch. When I was a I was probably I was in my early teens, I think, when Casino came out. Maybe 12, maybe a little younger, but I think it was more 12, 13 range range. And when Casino came out, um, I, that that scene at the end where Joe Pesci is getting murdered, and first he has to watch his beloved brother getting murdered, and they don't do it quick. They're they're beating him to death, and that scene just. Uh, I'm a horror person, but that scene truly horrified me when I was a kid because I because I mean just psychologically having to you know It's scary enough to think about your own mortality, but you you you, you can handle it to some degree But watching somebody you love you know more than life itself getting murdered and brutally at that in front of your eyes Just made my blood run cold and that's a movie like I'll watch it But when we get to that scene with the cornfield where, where, where they're about to murder Joe Pesci and his brother I usually turn it off. I, I just that that's probably one of the most brutal scenes on film but again I really even though Joe Pesci was a Stockholm killer I liked Joe Pesci I, I I love everything the man's ever done I love him as an actor I love him as a person and yeah he was a stone cold killer in the thing but he was likable to me and um, so yeah so that's probably the movie that scarred 
bothered me the most. It wasn't any horror movie that did it, but that mo that scene with the cornfield, oh, that's that's one of the most brutal scenes in all horror, or not horror, but all uh, movie history for Jen. That, that was the scene out of all, you'd think it would be one of my horror movies that really scarred me, but no, it's the cornfield scene from, uh, from Casino that just, wow. Um, another movie that I loved as a kid, and my mother let me watch it. She, she actually said, and she watched, let me see it pretty early when I was a kid, and that, of course, is Scarface. She goes, you'll like this, Jen, and I didn't know who Al Pacino was, you know, when I was, I was probably about seven or eight when I saw this movie for the first time, but my mother goes, I think you'll like this, and I know that might sound strange, a parent letting a, a kid watch Scarface at such an early age, but she knew I could handle it, and it is one of my most favorite lines. Uh, the character of Tony Montana reminds me a little bit of my mother in this, not that uh, killer wise, but just in that the way he thought before he got all messed up on the cocaine. Very smart and you know, uh, that scene, I never like him, I never trust him. Um, we always smile, my, my son and I always smile because that's sort of like our, our, our uh, that's like his grandmother, you know. It, it, uh, very unaffected that someone else got murdered, you know, and, and um, also the fact that I never make my, I never break my word or my balls. And the line that really reminds us of our mother is you don't, you know, who do you count on in this world? Who do I trust in this world? Me. Who do I depend on on this world? Me. That is very much my mother. My mother taught me at a very young age, we do not trust anyone outside this family <laughs> and all of that. And she taught the boys the same well. She's very, she's very not people people. So that movie kind of in a weird way always reminded me of my mother. So that's kind of a, an, it's a weird nostalgic movie to have perhaps, but I, I, the character of Tony Montana in some ways reminds me a lot of my mother. And then I'm going to go, and now that I've gotten to the, um, the uh, through the gangster movies, the last uh, category, uh, well, I've got two more categories, and then we'll wrap this up, Booze and Ghouls. And the last two categories are definitely movies that, um, that, uh, that, that are my melodrama movies, my chick flick movies, if you will, my love stories. And one of my favorite movies of all time is Gone with the Wind. I think I've talked about this in one other video, and it might surprise you, but I've read that book countless times growing up. That was a book that I would always go to um, when I wanted to just escape and try to forget about what was ever going on in my life. And um, I, I've seen the movie just as many times. In fact, it was on the other night and I was looking through channels and I, I watched it till, uh, to, to the end. And um, it, it, it's not for everybody, but I've always loved the Gone with the Wind. And I've always actually been more, tried to model myself more on the character of Melanie than Scarlet because when people say they admire Scarlet, yeah, there are some things to admire Scarlet about in the book and the movie, but she's kind of a terrible person. Nobody ever brings that up. She's very smart and very brave, um, but she's not she's not exactly the best person in the world. Where I've always uh, tried to be more like Mel the character of Melanie Wilkes, kind and gentle and nice to everybody. And although I failed very very short from that thing, but that's kind of who I've always tried to model uh, my own personal life on is the character of Melanie Wilkes. So that book and movie mean a lot to me and of course I had to add it into my nostalgic tag. Um, the other romantic movies that I, I, I loved as a kid was, one of them was The Bodyguard. I'm a big Whitney Houston fan, um, but the reason, and the movie is pretty much a by the numbers movie, so why do I love this movie so much? I adored this movie as a kid and it wasn't just because of the soundtrack. The reason I love The Bodyguard so much um, is, is the love story between Kevin Costner and Whitney Houston. And even then, and I was, I, I was probably 10 to 12, 13, somewhere in that area when that movie came out. I was pretty young when that movie came out, but I absolutely adored it, and I loved the love story. I love the ending does not give us a particularly happy ending. Um, they love each other, but at the end of the movie, they, they have to go back to their lives, and he's protecting somebody else, and she goes back to being a a singer and I, I, I bought their relationship and I and I it learned very early on that sometimes even if you really love a person sometimes they for whatever reason can't be in your life but it doesn't take away how much you love and care for them and just because they're not uh, with you anymore um, doesn't mean that there's not a day that goes by that you don't end up thinking about them and that movie just and that movie kind of gets that message across and I've always really loved it Another one of my really girly movies, and you guys have heard me talk about this one, is The Man in the Moon. And it's just a coming-of-age story about two sisters who happen to fall in love with the same guy. And um, he dies tragically toward, 
the middle of the movie. Uh, it was directed by the same director that directed To Kill a Mockingbird, and it's just a very quiet coming-of-age story. It was, it's one that a lot of 90s girls remember. Um, not everyone does, but there are, you ask the right 90s girl and they'll probably mention A Man in the Moon, and it's nothing spectacular. The story's been done before, but there's just something about that damn movie that I've always loved, and I saw that movie when I was probably about 12. 12 years old, 12, 14, 12 to 14, 15 range, and I've always loved it. My family, again, doesn't understand why. Another coming-of-age love story movie that I have is, um, is Gas, Food, and Lodging, which is a movie that actually was shot here in New Mexico, and that's not why I love the movie, but it's a movie that I always uh, really love, and it's about her mother and her two daughters, and um, they all find love in their own way, and, and, and some of them don't get happy endings, and some of them do, and some of them are you know, find hope again, and it's just another quiet movie, and it's just about the strength of women and relationships, and basically, being a woman is hard, which is a thing I've, I've talked about on this channel before, um, but it's a great movie. I really like the director, and um, she also did, the same director also did another movie I really love called La Vida Loca, which, um, it, it's about, uh, it's a, it, it's about intercenter gang girls, and, um, but, but if you take that away, it's, it's really just about mothers and women trying to navigate life with being a mother and and and, um, and loving men that could lose their lives at any time. It's a really good movie and I love, uh, that's another movie I would put on my romantic list. Uh, it, it's a good movie. You should definitely check both of those movies out. And then um, the last movie, uh, the last two movies for my romantic thing is Message in a Bottle. It's the only Nicholas Sparks uh, book that I really, really love. Um, I, I, I kind of have gotten to where uh, after you've read so many Nicholas Sparks books, they all kind of turn out to be the same, but there's something very magical about the Message in a Bottle, both the book and the movie. Um, again, another Kevin Costner movie, and I, I just love the love letters in the book and the movie. I think every woman should at least have one person in their life that write them those kind of love letters because they're beautiful. And again, it doesn't exactly have a, tra it has a kind of a tragic ending, but uh, it's kind of one of those movies where it's better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. And the last romantic movie that I'll get to on this list, and then, I pro and then I'll get to the last few, and then we're done. And the last movie on this list for the romantic movies part, and this is a total 80s movie, and I absolutely love it. It drives my family crazy. I loved it when I was a kid. I love it now, and that is Dirty Dancing. And that was just, oh my God, what I wanted to be Jennifer Grey when I was a little kid. I looked at her, and I thought, oh my God, she is so pretty. I'd love to be able to dance like her. And I can't dance. If someone put a gun to my head, I could not dance to save my life, but oh God, I wanted to be baby. I wanted Pat I wanted someone like Patrick Swayze to tell, tell my father, you know, nobody puts baby in the corner. I mean, it's just, they even have a weekend out there that you can go and experience like dirty dancing and like live the dirty dancing experience. And I want to go so bad. It just looks so much fun. Also, the music in that movie was just phenomenal. Um, you know, you just absolutely love it. And, um, but yeah, I love, and again, it's really not a happy love story because at the end, presumably they both go back to their own lives. And I always wanted to see a sequel to that. Like I know there's Havana Nights. I don't count that movie, but I actually wanted to see a sequel with Jennifer Grey and Patrick Swayze before he died. Um, uh, what would have happened, you know, like 20, 30 years, what, what, what happened to Johnny and baby? I've always wondered that. So yeah, definitely Dirty Dancing is what a very nostalgic movie that I absolutely adore. And the last ones on my list are ones that I just, that, that, that are just nostalgic movies that I know are bad, but I happen to love. And uh, real quickly, Ernest Goes to Jail is one that I loved as a kid. Um, my family never understood why, but I always loved the Ernest P. Wuerl uh, movies and even the short-lived TV show that he had. Um, but Ernest Goes to Jail was always my favorite. I rented this all the time when I was a kid. I don't know why, I just loved it. I, you know what I mean, Vern? It just worked for me. You know what I mean, Vern? Um, the other the other movies that I have on my list are uh, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 1 and 2. I was never much for kids movies. You guys have heard me say that. But even I succumbed to the Turtles rage. If you were there in the early 90s, the Turtles thing was just, uh, it was a phenomenon. I mean, everybody had the toys. Everybody was eating the cereal. Everybody was watching the cartoons. Turtles, 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 wherever you go. The last movie I have is Robin Hood Men in Tights. Um, uh, my, my family is a big Mel Brooks. All my family 
family is big Mel Brooks fans, but Men in Tights was one that they thought this is when Mel Brooks started to go down. I actually really enjoyed it. Um, Dave Chappelle's in it. Uh, it has a really great cast of people in it, um, but it's one that baffles my family. Um, but that is it for my uh, nostalgic movie, uh, the, the, the nostalgic tag. Um, the, a lot of love and respect to the to the last shoegazer for coming up with this amazing tag. When I was watching his, it brought back so many memories that I haven't thought of for a very long time. If anyone else would like to do this nostalgic tag, uh, feel free. Just give all the credit to the last shoegazer. I'm not going to tag anyone. Everyone's welcome to do this, except I am going to tag one person, and you guys probably already know who I'm going to tag. Uh, Jenna over at the Horror of the Horror. If you have some time, I would love to hear what are some of you. I would love to, to hear your answers to this uh, nostalgic tag. So if you have time, please do the tag. I'd really, I think we'd all love to hear your answers. Um, and with that, booze and ghouls comes another conclusion of a, of, a, of a Jen's Reviews from the Grave video. I hope you've enjoyed walking down memory lane with me, and I'll talk to you guys real soon. I hope you guys have a good day, a good evening, and I'll talk to you guys real soon. Bye!